Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a very historic video answering the question Why does the Boeing 747 have a hump? We'll look into how she received her iconic hump and what makes her so special. And yes, you are guessing correct, this is a part of a Boeing 747 fuselage section which was transformed into a wall bar by today's video sponsor Wilco Design. But more about on how you can win this fuselage part belonging to a famous airline, I think it's pretty obvious which airline flies around in these colors at the end of the video. So let's get out those history books and let's get started. <laughs> Delta 42 Heavy, you can hang out there, wait for the company 767 to get in front of you, which will happen momentarily. Follow him, monitor 1239. Good night. I am pretty sure that many of you can immediately spot a Boeing 747 from the distance, either taxiing on the ground or on departure as she slowly crawls her way up into the sky. Now, besides known for her incredible size, length, and power, it's her iconic hump that separates her from all other airplanes. But the question is, why did Joe Sutter, the father, genius mind, and project manager of the 747, put it there in the first place? At the beginning of the 1960s, Joe and his team of engineers first started the project, but initially hadn't even intended to build a passenger aircraft. Instead, they participated in a competition the US Air Force had put out to build a cargo aircraft matching their heavy logistics system requirements. Now these requirements played an important role in the design of the Boeing 747. The military's primary demand was a cargo hold large enough to fit a eight feet high and up to 20 feet long container matching the specifications they use on ships, rail and highway trucks, also known as the intermodal cargo concept. Now for Joe and his designers, this posed a big problem. A front-loading aircraft capable of taking such a high load hasn't been designed yet. And initially, they considered on modifying an older Boeing 707, but she was just too shallow and the cockpit, well, it was just in the way. The second approach was to make the fuselage wide and high enough to fit the container and make the cockpit lift upwards with all the control cables, electrical connections and hydraulics, etc. but immediately posed a problem. If the cockpit were to be raised and flipped backwards for loading, the crew could no longer be inside performing normal cockpit functions while the nose door was open. Also, another big concern was maintenance issues due to bending cables, piping and other problems former swing tail airplanes were suffering from. So that idea clearly went into the trash. So the designers therefore decided on a revolutionary idea to make a second shortened upper deck in the forward part of the fuselage that would be above the eight foot height of the cargo hold. And when the nose was raised for loading, the upper deck would remain in place and horizontal. Further, the required large air conditioning and pressurization units could be placed behind the cockpit, clearing more space on the cargo floor. So this placing of the cockpit above the main deck, making space for the eight foot high container and placing the air conditioning packs behind the cockpit left the designers no other choice to shape in this iconic aerodynamic hump she is so famous for. But sad fact, although the concept was great, Boeing lost the competition and the US Air Force gave the contract to Lockheed with their Galaxy C5 design. Now, please keep in mind that was in the 1960s. There are still approximately 60 to 70 galaxies in service today speaking of reliability and incredible maintenance crews. So Boeing, engineer Joe Sutter and his team were now stuck with a freighter plane that no one really wanted and a lot of money has already been spent. The only thing Boeing could do is to convert the freighter plane into a passenger plane. I mean, how hard can it be? Put in a few windows and a galley and you're done. Well, it wasn't that easy as no airline CEO showed any real interest in an oversized plane, which actually is a freighter 
and was only seen as a gap plane as something much faster and more exciting was about to be seen on the horizon. SST, supersonic transport. The entire airline industry was united in the view that passengers would be soon traveling exclusively on supersonic transport. Why would anyone buy a ticket to Europe for a nine hour trip when an SST ticket could be purchased and one could leave New York in the morning and arrive in Paris just a few hours later. In fact, most airline executives felt that a working SST would enter the market and transform the entire industry within five years. And the manufacturers were working hard to realize that goal. The Brits and the French were working on Concorde, the Russians followed with the Tupolev 144, and the Americans had Boeing 2707, which sadly never made it into service. The Boeing 2707 was also one of the major reasons why Joe Sutter was constantly struggling with financial problems as all the research and development funds went into the supersonic project. But luckily, Juan Tripp, the legendary founder and CEO of Pan Am, was the only one who showed some interest in the Boeing 747. The only request Juan had he demanded that Joe Sutter to reposition the air conditioning units from the upper deck below the main deck so that the space in the hump could be turned into a first class lounge. The staircase leading upwards to the lounge would give an exclusive separation between the economy and first class and would be an absolute marketing and selling point. Boeing agreed and the upper deck became a first class facility complete with a lounge and bar. Chances are you've heard about the plane with a spiral staircase in first class. The plane with the two wide aisles and the three widescreen movies and the eight foot ceilings and economy. And chances are you've wondered who's going to get this incredible bird off the ground. Now you know. So on the 22nd of January 1970, Pan Am's first Boeing 747 of 25 ordered entered service on its maiden flight from New York to London. And many other airlines quickly placed their order to stay competitive as the 747 was the record holder in passenger capacity for 37 years until the Airbus A380 entered service. And because of her gigantic size, range and reliability, she is one of the major contributors that your long haul ticket has become cheaper and cheaper over the years. So don't thank your airline, thank Boeing for introducing the first wide body airliner 50 years ago and Juan Tripp, who more or less you can call the savior of the 747. His visionary thinking paid off compared to other airline CEOs who were so fixed on the SST to be the future of air travel. In the end, only 20 Concords ever entered service and in 2019, Boeing sold more than 1,500 747s I would say that is a pretty significant number for a plane that no one really wanted in the first place and was predicted as a slow gap plane. And trust me, you'll be seeing the queen of the skies at least until the end of 2035. Yes, I know there are more modern and more efficient planes flying through the sky, but the 747 is a great plane on the second hand market as well as she can easily be converted from a passenger plane to a so-called BCF, a Boeing converted freighter. But more about that in my recent video on the unique nose cargo door. Now the future competitor who is probably going to end the era of the queen of the skies is her own little sister, the Boeing 777X. But that's just my opinion. Comment below what you think will follow after the 747. And now let's come back to this great piece of artwork you can attach to your living room wall. I recently met up with the guys from Wilco Design. These guys will comply with your placed order and convert genuine airplane parts from general aviation or commercial planes, wings, stabilizers, jet engines, even an entire fuselage 
upcycle them and then create design furniture for your apartment, meeting room, lounge or welcome area. Have you ever taken a bath in a jet engine? I certainly have. <laughs> but you are not just buying parts from any kind of airplane. No, they will add a little emblem to your furniture with the registration of the airplane, the manufacturer serial number, its first takeoff and last landing date, so you know exactly what you are looking at. So for instance, this window right here was cut out of KLM's 747 Papa Hotel Bravo Fox Romeo's forward fuselage and was converted into a little wall bar. Now just thinking about it, how many places this piece of metal must have been to and how many passengers were able to watch takeoff and landings through it is amazing. And Wilco Design and I are giving away this 747 wall bar to a lucky winner. Now how can you win it? Click the link in the description box below, fill out the contact form, tell us why you deserve to win, we'll choose a lucky winner and we'll then try to actually hand it over in person. So a big thank you to Wilco Design with their brand Flugzeugmöbel.de for sponsoring this video. By the way, Flugzeugmöbel is German for airplane furniture. This has been an amazing collaboration with you guys. Check out their website for more cool converted airplane parts at flugzeugmobile.de. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. And as always, hit the subscribe button and activate the notification bell so you won't miss out upcoming videos. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. See you next week. Your Captain Joe.